Welcome to Right on Track, a songwriting podcast. Thanks to Tom for tuning in. I'm Demi Michelle Schwartz, and I'm thrilled you're joining me on my songwriting journey. So kick back and relax, don't fall flat, and remember, stay right on track. Hello, welcome back to Right on Track. I am so excited because joining me today is Amelia Quinn. Hey, girl. Hi, how are you doing? I'm fantastic. How are you? I'm very good. Thank you. So I'm really excited you're here today because we're talking all about songwriting and emotions. But before we dive into that, would you like to share a little bit about yourself and your musical journey so far? Yeah, sure. So as you said, my name is Amelia Quinn. Um, I'm based in the UK, as you might be able to tell. Um, And I've been songwriting since I was 11 years old. Um, It's something that's just always been kind of an outlet, not just creatively, but like emotionally for me. Um, And honestly, once I started, I couldn't stop. (laughs) And that kind of like has landed me where I am today, you know, trying trying to make it as it were in the business and being a songwriter. And I've been very lucky to have written with lots of really cool people and played live and and be an artist as well as a songwriter that's fantastic i'm so excited i'm so excited for all the things that you have been doing because you've been killing it i've been seeing all over social media so congrats on all your music (laughs) thank you you're welcome so you brought up emotions while you're talking so that's why i'm really excited you're on this episode because this is a topic that you actually suggested for us to do so i'm thrilled you're here and to kick off this conversation would you like to read a quote that hans christian anderson is credited with so the quote is when words fail music speaks i love this quote and i actually have a plaque in my room with this quote on it i just got recently so this quote is definitely one that means a lot to me but before i talk about it what does this quote mean to you i think it just means that like i I make a joke i'm always better at singing than i am at talking about things and i think that kind of speaks to that is that sometimes speaking words is just not enough and you just can't convey the emotion behind something um whether it's hurt or happiness or you know anything else anger you know sometimes music just conveys that so much better and easier than talking about it can I completely agree. I definitely think that the musical aspect of the stories that we share as songwriters and that others share definitely brings that emotion because you can just read your lyrics out loud, but when you bring in the musical side, it definitely adds a lot to it. And I know for me personally, I started with piano and piano has no lyrics. It's simply music and melody. And just from listening to a piece of music, you can feel something. If it's in a minor key and slow, it's like kind of sad and a little mysterious. But if it's super up tempo and major key, then it gives a happy vibe. So you can definitely see from the music side how emotions can be conveyed and when you add words to that in the story it just gives stories so much more and it can offer so much more to a listener yeah definitely and it's like such a therapeutic thing as well like as a songwriter to even if you're not putting lyrics down even if you're just playing something like you said you can convey so much emotion in just an instrument and like it can be so much easier to process that emotion and get those emotions out by putting it to music rather than just like being in your head and you know getting getting upset about things it can be a lot easier to sort of process those those things that you go through by playing music and it's it's crazy how it's just so powerful I love what she said. Yeah, I totally, totally agree. And it's not only, you know, the lyrics, like you said, just the music and playing guitar, playing piano, getting those difficult emotions out through music. Even if it's not like for a song specifically that you're trying to release, it can just simply be you playing around on an instrument. And I think that's one of the things that people don't really realize about songwriters. They think it's all about crafting completed songs all the time, but sometimes it's just about processing emotions through playing a melody on the piano or strumming guitar. No, totally. Like most of my songs, I never do anything with them because they were just written because that's what I was feeling at the time and I had to get something out. Like I don't necessarily, well, I definitely don't use the majority of the songs that I write 
because they're not I'm not writing just to sell records like that's actually a byproduct of my songwriting it just happens that I want to share some of the songs that I write with the world and, and you know arrange them and make them into a record that's a great point and I completely agree same like I feel like way more than half of my songs nobody has ever heard because they're like little snippets of things of me exploring my emotions and I think that's a huge part of songwriting I think this is why also creative people in general whether that be musicians artists dancers like if you're creative you have such a you know positive outlook on the world at times and also you're very in tune with your emotions and when we go through these difficult things instead of turning to more negative ways of dealing with things we turn to music and that's very positive so I think you know us as creative people we're very fortunate for that yeah and I have like a saying that kind of goes along with that is that it was worth going through if I can get a song out of it <laughs> <laughs> I love it I love that so much so we've been talking a lot about, you know, these songs and how they convey emotion through listening. So is there a specific song that you turn to when you're feeling down or happy or whatever emotion? Is there a certain song that is kind of your go-to for any point in time? Oh, man. I don't know. I know that there's like a couple of songs. Well, one of them, I, I just can't. Sometimes I just can't listen to it because it's too, it means too much, like, it really gets me and I can't listen to it without crying. Um, and that's Million Reasons by um, Lady Gaga. I love the song. It is a beautiful, beautiful song. But I have to skip it if I'm not in a situation that I can bawl my eyes out. Um, but songs that I turn to as well, another one is Fire Away. That I can listen to without crying. Um, and it just it's comforting. It's one of my favorite songs in the world. And it's like just a really familiar even though it can come across as a bit depressing, I, I don't know, I like sad songs. <laughs> I find comfort in them. Maybe that says something about my personality. <laughs> no, I completely agree. Yeah, honestly, like, that's the thing that I think people think is so weird. Like, if you're sad, people are like, why are you listening to a sad song? That doesn't make any sense. Like, put on happy music. But it's so true. Like, like the songs, there are two that are coming to mind right now. That when I want to cry or when I'm just, like, in my feels. Um, in Case You Didn't Know by Brett Young is one. And From the Ground Up by Dan and Shay. Those two songs wreck me because they're so good and they're like the cutest like love songs and I just sit there and I'm like I want somebody to sing this to me like I want this to be played at my wedding like like stuff like <laughs> that like getting all in your feels about you know music is so important but it can allow it can allow you to do that too like because everyday life is pretty harsh at times and you don't you're not always in that space where you can be in your feelings and that you can just let yourself process things let yourself feel things and like being able to listen to music and have those songs that you connect with I feel like you can it gives you a space where you can do that and it's really important it definitely is and something that's coming to mind right now is I don't know if you know a song for everything by Mary Morris yeah that song just the chorus I pulled up the lyrics are one danced you through love, one rocked you through lonely, mixtaped your heartbreak and made you feel holy. For the hits and the misses, for the fire and rain, close your eyes and listen, because there's a song for everything. And that's so true. I love this song because it really illustrates how there is a song for everything, and no matter what emotion you're feeling, there's always a song out there. Somebody said it first. Somebody is going through the same thing you are, and I think that's why so many people turn to music during emotional times, because... There are songs out there that can say, hey, I know what you're going through and you're not alone with it. Yeah, absolutely. And like from a songwriter perspective as well to write a song because you're going through those feelings and then, you know, say say it's one of the songs that I end up releasing and, and I put it out there and to hear people saying and see people saying hey I know that too like I've been there too and even though everyone's experiences are going to be slightly different having us writing a song that resonates with people is just the most comforting feeling and freeing at the same time because you don't you don't feel so lonely anymore and you don't feel like you know there's something wrong with you or anything like that you see all these people are saying hey I, I get this I resonate with this and you're like oh my god I'm not alone in this this is okay <laughs> I completely agree and it's so comforting and I love something you said and you said that 
not everybody's experiences are the same. People have different experiences, but they can still relate. And I think that is what really shows emotion in music because no matter what culture you're from, no matter where you live in the world, we all feel happiness, sadness, heartbreak, love, all these things. And it's the stories that convey those. Like we all have our own lives and our own stories, but at the core of all of that are these emotions that we all feel. And I think that's why it's so comforting because a songwriter has to really open up and be authentic and share their story. But even though the listener doesn't have that 100% exact experience, they can still find themselves in it and their stories in it. I think that's so beautiful. Yeah, definitely. And like, it can be really, really scary to open up a new song. And like I said, if you go on to, you're really in your feelings and you really write a super emotional song and then you go and you release that to the world, like that's really scary because it's a little piece of your life. It's a little piece of you and what you've been through. And like, I think a lot of people don't, you know, don't talk about, you know, a lot of songwriters don't talk about, a lot of people, fans don't, maybe don't see it because it's not being spoken about, that if you've written about something, you know, a period of of time that's really difficult, something that's, that you've been through that's really difficult, and you put that out in the world, you have to tour that, you have to gig that, you have to do the radio tour, you have to do the interviews, all the reviews, all the press for it, you have to relive that moment every single time you hear and play that song and it's it's pretty rough emotionally as a songwriter to do that yeah I'm just processing everything you just said because I totally relate and I just really experienced that with will I ever my latest single because totally so do you have a song specifically that when you wrote it it was really difficult but you're like you know what I'm putting this out and you did and then after you did it was like oh my god like was there a song specifically that you really were hit hard emotionally yeah I think um my debut EP has a couple of songs on it wrote off and um sorry mama and they're both sort of about um the breakup of my family basically and like that was a really really tough time because I wasn't it's I don't want to say it's more difficult when you're an adult but I, I was an adult when my family sort of broke up and you know that's all I'd known for 20 years <laughs> and then to have that you know that's it was really sudden as on well. so to have that sudden change and shift and all those along with I wasn't living at home either I was away at uni and so you know I wasn't able to be there or anything and I was felt very detached and isolated from it and those two songs are me processing that period of time in my life and every time I play the songs I go back to that period of time and it's not as strong as it was but yeah like it, it was a rough time and then so every time I you know I go play those live or I, you know someone someone left a review on them or something um, or when I was doing all the promo for the EP I felt those emotions and still do now and it's yeah it's it's a lot but at the same time I think they helped me and I think they helped me through it so I'm forever grateful to be a songwriter and, and be able to focus my emotions into that because you know lord knows what i'd be doing if i wasn't songwriting (laughs) thank you so much for sharing all of that and what you said at the end really resonated with me when you said releasing these songs helped you through it even though you still feel it a little bit it helped you in some way and i think that I think that's why we do this you know like it's so scary and when I wrote will I ever I was literally crying in my room and I was like I can't release this I can't do this I can't do it (laughs) and then literally like I put it out night it came out I was like I cannot believe I'm putting this song out interviews I was exhausted but now I feel stronger in a way for like opening up about that and so I'm curious for you like how do you find the emotional strength to release these songs um so I mean I'm still it's still a learning curve and I'm still learning how to handle it and like this is going to be surprisingly relevant in the near future um so keep an eye on my social media um but yeah, it's. I think I've I've tried a few different ways. Not all of them successful. So you know, putting feelings in a box and pushing them aside doesn't really work. Um, tried and tested. But doing more sort of mindfulness meditation, letting myself feel. I think the biggest thing is letting myself feel those feelings, 
but making sure I don't stay there. So like I always say, and I always say to myself and to my partner, you know, be be upset, be angry, be sad, feel whatever you need to feel. Just don't stay in that place for too long. Don't let it ruin everything else that's going on for you. Because it's probably just one thing or one or two things that aren't very great. You shouldn't let them taint everything else in your life that is good. That's so inspiring. Thank you for sharing all of that. It's so important. I feel like our songs can kind of be, I always say they're diary entries, which is why my upcoming album yeah. is called Dear Diary. Yeah. <laughs> um, but they're also kind of like mirrors too, because they reflect our feelings back. And I think that when we find the strength to talk about these things, we get them out and we get them out of our system. Mm-hmm. And Definitely. <clears throat> Even though we still feel that, instead of being trapped in our head, which is something you mentioned earlier, we have something tangible, lyrics and music of a song that we can listen to ourselves and process ourselves, which is something we experience with other artist songs. And it's so cool, I think, how we can listen back to a stripped down version or a master of one of our own songs and feel something from that too. Yeah, totally. And like even just get doing like a voice memo if it's something that you really need to process like doing a voice memo and writing it and listening back to it that can just help tame those feelings and and get those feelings out and and get you sort of on the road to feeling better about whatever it is that's going on this is this is assuming that every song you write is really sad not every song we write is sad but (laughs) most of them are (laughs) yeah I'm I'm really bad at writing happy songs like so bad at it same I feel like this is what I've noticed I don't know if you've noticed this too but I feel like the happy songs that I write that I love are from co-writes yeah and that's so weird and I think it's because like I'm so trapped in my own head and I I feel like I'm most inspired to write when I feel sad and down but when I'm in a room with somebody else or on zoom with somebody else I feel positive energy and so if they're like hey let's write a happy song I'm like all for that and I'm able to but it's so weird how I can on my own I think it's just having that other person there yeah and I think like when you're on your own as well like like you said you're in your head and it's sort of it's easier to feel difficult feelings when you're by yourself than in front of someone else like I haven't really written a super emotional song with anybody else because I'm I'm not I'm not that open of a person (laughs) like just personality wise like not like music wise and stuff I am pretty open music wise but just in my personality like I really struggle to talk about my feelings um and I'm sure lots of people are like that too and I think in a co-write especially when it's someone you don't know very well we've just met it's really scary to try and open up so yeah I totally get like being happy and bouncing off someone else especially if you're quite a social person as well it's fun to to write with someone else and you want to write a happy song but a lot harder to write sad songs in the presence of someone (laughs) I completely agree. Yeah, 100%. I can't, like, will I ever, and the other emotional songs I have, if I would even try to write that with another person, I'd just, like, cry the whole time and be like, yeah, no, I'm gonna go now and do this myself because I can't do this right now. Um, But yeah, I think it's, I think it's so awesome how other people can kind of bring a new perspective and positive energy. And I agree with you too. I am not an open person personality wise. And I think that's another thing that people think about songwriters. They're like, you're pouring your heart and soul into songs for people all over the world to hear. And you're not an emotionally open person. This doesn't make any sense, but it definitely Isn't it does. <laughs> <laughs> isn't it weird it's, that's the thing it all comes to back to it's so much you know when when words fail it's so much easier to put it into music than try and speak about it openly and that's when our words are failing so we use music <laughs> yeah it's so cool and it's it's so cool I like literally can't get over the fact that something as you know, simple and normal as music. Like, every culture has it. It's been around for, like, ever. Music is just such a part of life. And it's complex in a way, but when you just think of music itself, like, it's not anything insane. It's just music. Um, But, like, music itself is so powerful. And I think, you know, like, for us as songwriters and for listeners, listening to a three-minute-long song 
can literally touch somebody's heart, change their life. And it's three minutes. I mean, shorter, longer, give or take, but a short song can do so much. And I think, you know, going back to the quote, when words fail, music speaks, it literally does. And it speaks for everybody all over the world. So I'm curious to know, here comes a question. (laughs) (laughs) So when you get a rush of emotion and have to write, is your go-to getting the lyrics out first or do you go to the music? Um, I think for ages I didn't really know what my process was because it was just a, oh, it just kind of happens thing. Um, and it's still, you know, it still is. That's that's how my first song ever happened and that's how pretty much all of them happen now. It's, it's just the most inconvenient moments ever as well. Um, but I think what I found from like trying to be a bit more observant of when I'm writing songs, I tend to have a bit of a melody and like a small lyric that come together and then I'll build off of that. And I usually write melody and lyric at the same time because I like to make everything fit like straight away. Sometimes I do write just the lyrics though and then come back to it and put melody to it later on thank you for sharing your process i think that's so cool and like this is one of my favorite things about having songwriters on for songwriting related episodes is because everybody's processes are so different but at the same time there are things in common too like for me if i'm really inspired and really kind of in tune with my emotions i write lyrics and melody at the same time too and some people can think like how do you do that? Like, that's so much going on. But in my brain, like, I don't even have to think about it. It's just, it just happens. Um, But like you too, I kind of can start with the lyrics first at times and then add melody. I don't think I've ever written a song where I just wrote an entire melody and then added lyrics. I don't think I've ever done that. Yeah, I don't... I can't think of a time that I've ever done that. I've written chord progressions before and put stuff to that, but not like a whole melody and then gone back and fitted words to it. It obviously it's like, for me, it would be too difficult to do it that way round. Whereas when you've got the words already, you can fit your melody into that a lot easier. Yeah, I completely agree with that. So another emotion question. So we talked a lot about, you know, the emotions that cause you to write the songs and then releasing. But I want to talk about the moment when you first finish it like when you start writing a song that you feel like you really have to write whether it be the moment you write the last lyric or wrap up the melody or it can even be when you listen back to it fully for the first time how does that feel emotionally to kind of see a whole song and reflect it back at you all at once at the for the first time it feels really cool and it's kind of it's almost like a piece of closure so if it's something that i've been processing that's like really difficult then it's almost like a moment of like clarity and closure on those feelings and say okay I did it I got them out I went through it and I feel so much better for it like like the weights off your shoulders I love how you use the word clarity because that's something that I've experienced too like especially when you're dealing with such dark emotions it's so Mm -hmm. hard to kind of go through that maze and navigate it and kind of find, you know, a reason or clarity. But as soon as you have it in a song, it's like your heart and mind did it without you even really trying. And then when you can look back at it, you're like, oh, yeah, that's how I was feeling. But you didn't fully understand until you wrote it. And I think that's one of the coolest things is like something as simple as a song that comes out of us can give us so much clarity about a situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. So let's talk a little bit about performing. So you talked a little bit about, you know, how you still feel the emotions that you felt when you wrote a song when you perform. But when you're performing your songs in general, I'm sure there's definitely a sense of, you know, pride and happiness that you're sharing these songs. But can you share a little bit more about your emotional journey while you're performing your original music? Yeah, I mean, I... So... I get really bad stage fright still. It's just something that I'm always going to have, I think, and I've accepted it at this point. Um, And to be honest, I'm I'm okay with it because it means that I care. And so I I just put it down as a good thing and carry on. (laughs) Um, So I'm pretty, like, focused on, like, getting the words right, getting the chords right, and just generally getting it right, which, you know, doesn't usually happen. I usually mess something up, and it's generally my own lyrics that I forget. Um... But when I, I think the moments that are like the most significant is 
you know those pin drop moments like when you play a really emotional song and there's one gig that I can really remember and it was it was at a venue called the Lending Room in Leeds and it's quite a big venue and I never played it before it was on my bucket list of venues I've never played it before and it was the crowd wasn't there to see me it was the headliners crowd through and through like I think there were like three people there to see me and they were all quite chatty um the whole way through the, the first guy's set and they were talking quite a lot during my set until I played this one song and it was like the slowest song that I had in the set it was the most ballady ish one um and probably one of the most most emotional ones as well that I was performing that evening and everyone stopped talking like there was not one person speaking during the whole of the song and you could literally just hear me and nothing else and I was like oh my god these these people are listening to it like they're really really listening to the lyrics to you know to the whole thing and they care enough to not talk for the full song and I think that was like that was one of my favorite moments on stage because I just felt like I made such a connection with every single person in that room. And like, for me, I'm not out here, you know, to, to have a huge fan base and make loads of money from my music and that kind of stuff. And I'm happy if one person turns around and says, your song made me feel something. So to have a whole room of people sort of have that reaction was so overwhelming. And as much as the song was an emotional and quite a sad one, I felt so, so happy in that moment. That's such a beautiful story. Thank you so much for sharing that, Amelia. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. <laughs> no, it's so, like, I'm just sitting here like, wow. Like, I can't wait till I can experience that with my songwriting. I've definitely experienced things like that with piano when I was a classical pianist. I still am, but that was my, that's my main thing, classical piano. Um <clears throat> And so I've definitely had, you know, concert halls full of people. And there's a time where we're going to continue. <laughs> um, <laughs> I've definitely had concert halls full of people and play very emotional pieces. No lyrics, just pieces. Claude Debussy is my favorite composer. Arabesque is my favorite piece. If you don't know that, it's beautiful. Um, but I've literally had people come up to me after concerts and be like, I literally cried and at first like when I first started piano it didn't really hit me I'm just thinking I literally just play piano how could that have made you cry it's just piano um but then like when I stopped to think about it I put so much heart and soul into that and even though there's no words you can do so much with piano with dynamics and expression and for you to experience something like that with an original song is so incredible and I hope you have more moments like that and I hope <laughs> once, oh, you're welcome <laughs> and when I, once I get out once I get out more and play I'm hoping I experience that too because that brings an entire new level of emotion listeners aren't just listening to your recording when you're in a room and playing publicly for somebody you get that in-person emotional connection and I think that's extremely special and you get too. It instantly as well like you get instant feedback if people are interested in what you're doing they'll you know they'll be quiet and they'll listen to you if they're not interested or they don't really care about what you're doing then they're not really going to pay attention to you and you can see them from the stage as well so you could sort of get that immediate audience reaction and I think that's probably partly what's scary about performing live especially original music is there's no escaping from the feedback at all <laughs> no no there's not and I think it takes so much strength to get up there and perform an original song because you're basically pouring your heart out singing directly to people you're not hiding behind your master playing on spotify you're actually no. standing in front of people <laughs> um but i think it takes a lot of strength i think as songwriters we definitely have something special where we're so connected with our emotions and so willing to open up through music um and so i think that's truly incredible it is go us <laughs> well this conversation flew by like so it fast <laughs> uh, um, but before we go Amelia what are some final thoughts you would like to share about songwriting and emotions as a whole um I think that you don't have to be a professional songwriter to write songs and I think that can be like a misleading thing is that people think oh well I'm not going to try writing a song because you know I'm not a songwriter but you don't have to be 
job title a songwriter to use lyrics or even poems you can write poetry you don't have to be a poet to write poetry and if that helps you process your emotions then you should absolutely do it it's not you know as much as it is a profession it can also be a hobby too and you don't have to be the best songwriter in the world you don't have to share them with anybody if you don't want to if it's just a personal thing that helps you with whatever you're going through why not yes what Amelia said, everybody. Just <laughs> like literally, it's so true. You don't have to worry about your songwriting ability. It's not about that. When you're writing from the heart and from emotion, it's not about is this melody good? Is these are these lyrics good? Like that's not the point. It's not about being perfect when you're writing from your heart and emotion. So just do it for yourself. That's why I do this, and I know that's why you do it. It's not to be famous. We do this because songwriting is our way of processing things, and some songs are better than others, but for us, it's not about the, the song itself. It's about the emotion and our journey writing it. Yeah, exactly. Oh, Amelia, this was fantastic having you on. I love talking to you. Where can you share with the listeners where they can find you on social media and listen to your music? So they can find me on Instagram and Facebook um, at Amelia Quinn Music and Amelia Q Music on Twitter. And I actually have a brand new single coming out in 10 days from now. So it'll be on the 23rd of July. It's coming out. It's called Games. And it's a co-write as well. So it's not a sad song. <laughs> it's a feisty one. It's, it's a sassy one. Um, and all the sort of pre-save information is available on my social media. Thank you so much for having me. It's been lovely talking about songwriting. Of course. Thank you for being on. Everybody, please go check out Amelia. Thank you for listening. And until next time, stay, stay right, right on, on track. track.